very, very fortunate to have a number of coaches on board here uh, of note, uh, especially. I'm very, very pleased, obviously, working with Coach Chuck Bresnahan. He's on board here, being part of the clan, helping us grow. Um, also, it, it, we have a celebrity coach, uh, Sky Analyst, uh, a true friend to share the knowledge, Hope International. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass it over to Coach Jeff Reinbold. Just, I think it'd be good for him, he, for, for us to hear him introduce our speaker. Coach, if you wouldn't mind, say a few words and go ahead and introduce our speaker. Thank you, Rick. And, and again, thanks to Chuck and everybody. And please pass this forward to Rod that uh, this is an awesome, awesome thing you guys have started. And, and I've watched it grow from an idea to now being coaches from all over the world, getting an opportunity to get together and, and talk football, which is what we all want to do and have an opportunity to grow. Uh, I want to introduce tonight's speaker, a uh, young guy that I had on my podcast tonight, uh, did a great job for us. Um, Michael George is a born and bred Texan. Uh, he worked with the uh, de defensive line last year with the XFL Ar Arlington, not Dallas, Arlington Renegades. Uh, he's going to talk to you tonight about sim packages and how you can show pressure, play zone, show zone, play pressure. Some really neat stuff that they did uh, in Arlington last year, and I think you're going to really enjoy. Uh, Michael, congratulations and welcome to the show. Well, thank you for that. Um, really appreciate uh, the introduction. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I really appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to be awesome. here and to, to share with all of you uh, this evening. Um, I spent about 15 years in college football, um, places like Ohio State, um, Ohio University, Villanova, down to Texas State. Um, spent a lot of time on offense and then in operations and recruiting, in video, in, um, you know, every kind of all these other uh, facets of the game and operations. Um, I came down to Texas State. I was uh, then was in some of the spring leagues. I, you know, I heard uh, Chuck and Jeff talking about, you know, the, the spring league. Um, I was helping out there with the jousters in whatever year that was in 21. Uh, I was in the AAF with the San Antonio Commanders in 2019, uh, with the St. Louis Battlehawks in 2020, and then the Arlington Renegades here in 23. So I've done a couple of different professional leagues. And again, uh, having a lot of different avenues being involved in the game, uh, in the operational side, in the communication with players, in, in equipment, like in video, like um, and, and really so many different um ways that no matter what level we're talking about, no matter where I've been, whether it's been high school, division three, FCS, group of five, power five, professional football, I've seen it in a lot of different ways and how you can do it with a different size of staff and how you have to kind of get the job done. Um, so I, I appreciate that, the opportunity to share. Um, and so what I, just give me a second as I share my screen. Um, but um, what I'm going to talk uh, tonight about is uh, putting together a pressure package, our simulated pressures. Um, and so the first thing that I want to make sure that uh, that I do is, you know, that I appropriately you know, kind of define what we're talking about. And so um, what is a sim pressure? It's when we're bringing uh, a non-traditional pass rusher and uh, someone like a line. Sorry about that. Linebacker, defensive back, uh, but also, um, I don't know why I didn't pause. There you go. Um, and we're going to drop a traditional rusher. So we'll drop a defensive lineman. Sorry about that. Um, and so why do we like sim pressures? Why are they popular across the NFL, across college? Um, but uh, it's a sound design. You know, we're, get, we're able to get into our eight-man pressures um, and execute a pressure package while maintaining coverage in the back end. Um, 
I don't know why my mouse isn't uh, pausing my uh, remote. So give me just a second, guys. I'm sorry about that. Got to love when thing, when technology uh, interrupts us. Yeah, it looks like it's perfectly normal now. That's great. Um, so again, all right, so we have sound design. We have a pressure package while maintaining our coverage. And it's simple for us, but it's complicated for the defense. And so for us, it's a lot of same as teaching. And what I mean that is that we're able to give certain techniques that, and fundamentals that we're coaching to our players, and they're able to apply them to different schemes, and we're able to uh, be more complicated. But at the same time, it's easy for us to be able to do it because it's the same fundamentals and techniques. But because we're giving them slightly different looks, it's going to create some uncertainty for the opposing quarterback in making his reads and where his opening areas are, but also the receivers as they're running their routes. And I just want to make sure that before we even get into sim pressures, uh, talking about the guys up front and any blitzer that we might add, I want to talk about some pass rush commandments, just things that I really believe in that are uh, always uh, kind of fundamentals. And so number one, that we're going to rush as a unit. And so it's going to be so important to maintain our pass rush lanes. We're going to push the middle. We don't want the quarterback to step up. We want that quarterback to feel the pressure that we're presenting to him. But it's also really important that we never end up with two B-gap rushers where now there's a big opening in the middle that quarterback can step up and scramble into. Individually, our rushers have to have a plan. You want to have coach up your players that they have a pass rush move in mind each and every play and have that move and a counter. So as they go into that snap, understand what the plan is to do. And then if the offensive lineman takes it away, have the counter off of it to be able to still get pressure onto the quarterback. Pre-snap, it's so important to know where the launch point is. Know the depth of the quarterback. Is he under? Is he gun? Does this team like to go three-step or five-step or seven-step? Because those are going to all influence where our rush has to affect. We have to be able to get off on the ball or the movement, whatever's fast, whatever's first, okay? Because speed is the name of the game. We're going to always attack half a man, okay? So, you know, when I say half man, I don't want to ever go rush right down the middle of an offensive lineman because that's where he is and he's got his two hands. I want to always attack half, work my move, make him shoot his hands, be able to beat his hands, rush with my two hands and be able to get pressure through that gap, through that area. As you're rushing the, the gap, we want to get skinny, right? We're going to have a small surface area so that we're not giving the offensive lineman the same surface to make contact with us as they're trying to block us. I want to be able to give him, but then take it away so that he thinks he can punch and get contact on my surface, but then I'm going to actually take it away. I'm going to be like water, right? Like Bruce Lee, you know, where I'm going to be able to move in such a way that I can uh, affect the quarterback, affect the gap, get pressure, but I'm going to go and, and move where right. I'm able to go. Okay. The, but the key here is that we're going to avoid no man's land, no drive by rushes. And I'll show you what I mean by that. If we're behind the quarterback, that's the worst place in the world that you can ever be. You got to spin back or hump back the hump, uh, big time move, you know, Reggie white. If you ever, you with the, with the big uh, club up and underneath um, the offensive lineman's uh, armpit. And so you can hump back to get back involved in the play. If you're going power rush, we always want to go one arm is longer than two. And so understand that you can get separation away from that offensive lineman. One arm is longer than two than trying to lock out here. I can lock out here with a long arm through and then work my counter and finish the play. We're never going to leave our feet. You know, our guys are tall enough. Okay. Get your hands up. Hi guys. Make the quarterback throw out of a well, but you don't have to, to leave your feet. Okay. When I said no man's land, this is what I mean. So this is what our pass rush should look like. Our yeah. interior pass rushers are going to attack the downfield shoulder of the quarterback. 
closer to the line of scrimmage, whereas the outside rushers are going to go to the upfield shoulder and contain. Okay. And so that's where we're going to be able to affect the quarterback. Again, we don't want to have two B gap rushers to give them that step up. And we don't want to have those drive bys in no man's land behind the quarterback. There's no, nothing good that can happen five yards behind the quarterback. All right. So now to get into some of our pressures. So the way I've kind of structured this and the way we're going to go through is we're going to look at some blitzes that uh, a lot of them are fire zone pressure. And so that's where we're going to start. And after uh, we take a, a look at the, the fire zone or the, in some case, man, then we're going to look at what would it look like if we made this a sim pressure. And so here I've got pictured just an, a linebacker plug blitz, right? Straight ahead, there's an open B gap. We're going to have the linebacker take the open gap that's directly in front of him. That's the blitz. I've got five rushers. If I want to make this a sim pressure, what's going to be different, and we'll come to a picture of it later, is that now we're going to have the away tackle here on the right-hand side be our contain rusher, and this right end is going to drop. So again, starting off with the blitz, and so that's where, where we are right now. So what we're going to see here is we have, uh, with the red gloves, uh, our middle linebacker on the far side is going to blitz the open B gap. And what we're going to do is we're also going to execute a stunt because of how these guys blocked this week. We ran this blitz with the B gap, but we also had a twist up front. So we have, it's a five man go, it's a blitz. We're playing fire zone coverage, three deep, three under. And there's our blitzing linebacker untouched in the backfield for a big TFL. So here from the end zone, Again, what we're going to see, there's our linebacker, 53. There's the open gap directly in front of him. He's going to take that gap. Five-man go. And it's a big negative play. So big steps to, to be able to execute. Now, here we are later in the season. Now we're against St. Louis. It's the exact same blitz, the same pressure. We're still uh, playing uh, three deep, three under. Because the offensive formation is giving us trips, we have the safety coming down to play on that uh, number three receiver um, right here. And we're going to rush these five up front. Okay. Incomplete pass. We get off the field. Okay, the big third down, you know, as we pressured here in this situation. But again, it's a five man go. They pick it up. It's a hey, sometimes they do. But our guys are still in good coverage in our fire zone. Now, so here's the drawing of what the same pressure is going to look like, except now it's a simulated pressure. So there's only a four man rush only a four man go and we're going to have a full seven men in coverage four deep or sorry three deep four under and so here we are we've got linebacker showing here to the field against empty the blitz is coming up top into the open B gap. And we're playing, it's just cover three. To the, to the safeties, to the corners, to the nickel, it's all just cover three to them. They throw a hitch, he's immediately tackled, just like that should happen. Hey, if they're going to take a, a five-yard route, we're, we're going to tackle it, get them down. Okay? So here we are again, we're showing pressure here with 36 to the field and 18 is our rusher. Four man rush and 50, our field defensive end. 
is dropping back to play the field uh, hook, right? Because it's four under three deep. So they're playing, the, he's playing the field hook. Coach McCusker and Rick, anybody, if, if you guys need to hop in, if, if there's something um, that I don't see, um, you know, if you guys have a question right quick, um, don't feel uh, like you're, you're locked up. Yeah, good, Coach. All right, so here we are. We're empty again. Same, same formation, same blitz. Okay, so here our linebacker, 36, is showing there on top of the center. We're going to blitz from the up top, number 18, and number 50 is a drop defensive end. He's going to drop straight on the railroad track, so he should just back up straight on those hashes, and he's going to be the field hook right here. So we see, again, it's, it's a cover three, four under. We're only bringing four guys. It's a good job by their center stepping back and coming around their guard. But again, it's pressure in the quarterback's face. The ball is a little high. It's an incompletion. Again, how, are this, how is the offensive line going to identify this when they see this look? And then here comes our blitzer to try to get pressure into the face of the quarterback. Can he get his feet set? Can he step into that throw? Or are they off the field? This film is from 2020. Uh, we were in St. Louis. Our staff, defensive coordinator, uh, Jay Hayes and uh, Tim Lewis, um, we were all together in St. Louis as well. And so uh, here we are running the same pressure. And, and all I got to say to our defensive end here, don't miss the layup because there's our rusher coming on the inside. The tackle squeezes to him. Got to finish the play. Got to finish the play. Incompletion, but and we're off the field. But dang, those those are ones you want back. Here's another one, uh, back from 2020. They did a, a good job of seeing uh, our linebacker kind of showing, and so they thought they had it picked up. And so We see that here comes the rusher and the right end, the one up top is dropping and they're running mesh. So he's running right to him. It's a good job by the tight end trying to stop and the quarterback leading him back inside. But our defensive end breaks up the play and, and we're off the field. Again, they're trying to identify where the pressure is coming from. Here comes 57. And there's 42 dropping right to him. 26 is the other hook player. He's taking the other crosser. And getting off the field. I think I've got one more of, of these. Here it is again, four man go. Now, I put this one on here because if you were breaking us down, if you were the opponent and watching us here, you might not identify this as a sim pressure. You might not see our right end here as a dropper because he's getting a run look from his tackle. And so he's able to just stay and play. And so it's we're not bailing out early and creating a cushion for that offensive line, but understand that if pass shows that he is the hook defender on that side. And so this is really valuable. Again, when you start talking about tendencies and you talk about trying to um, 
get an offense to be uh, indecisive and uncertain is they may not break this down like 55 is a dropper. All right, so we saw what it could look like with a rusher up the middle, right, in that open gap directly in front of us. Well, so now we can rush our dime linebacker outside. So here's a five-man go. So this is a, again, we're, this is a blitz, fire zone pressure, three deep, three under. We see deep third, right, middle third. There's your two-player two player and then he's relating to three and it's a five man go this is a blitz how would we convert it to a simulated pressure we would sim uh convert it to a simulated pressure by the backside tackle becoming the contain and we'll drop the end okay so understand that that will uh be you know a consistent a uh, pattern is how we're going to be able to do this and how to be able to execute. So here we are. Here's our dime linebacker right on the near hash. Here's the blitz. Again, you see the five man go. They're running RPO with a glance. We're bringing a five man pressure. Our safety comes right down into that hole. Linebacker falls back into it. It's an incompletion. So this is three deep, three under, blitz, and we're able to pressure to the side of the running back and still affect the RPO that comes off of it. What's going to happen now if we run the simulated pressure? Okay, so now again, everything's the same, except now you've got an additional hook defender right here by this defensive end. And so now here's the hook on the right. Here's the hook on the left. There's your two curl flats and your deep thirds. So here we are, we're seeing empty. So we're our middle linebacker is showing pressure up the middle, but the blitz is actually coming from the dime on the weak side. Quarterback's running for his life got scared it is only a four-man rush and he is bailing out of there because he feels like he, he's got so much pressure you know we've got seven guys in coverage this is third and 11 and we're able to bring four guys and be right in the face of the quarterback affecting the throw again here's a clip from 2020 they throw a flare. Do you see who makes the tackle? Number 95. Pause for a second. He's right here. He's our right tackle. He is going to contain. And they throw this flare. And so he's able to just keep chasing it. Understand that when you can get these big guys believing in what you're doing and making plays outside the numbers, you all, you, you've already won. You're there. So again, here is our dime linebacker blitzing from the bottom of the screen. Other three are moving up toward the top of the screen. Pressure in the face of the quarterback. And the left defensive end, who is coming inside, gets the hit on the quarterback. This is a great picture of what I talked about earlier with our pass rush lanes. So we talk about this outside rusher. Well, he's got the back point of the quarterback. I don't want him to go pat too far behind, but he's got this back point. This is our contain rusher on this side. He's containing this back point. And these two guys are now the interior rushers. So even though on that picture I showed you, it was four defensive linemen, here we've introduced a linebacker and we have three defensive linemen, but they're now all in position to accomplish those same tasks. So 96 and 98 here are pushing the middle 
to get to the front pad of that quarterback and affect him, his, his ability to step up. And there's exactly what you want to see. He tries to step up and he ends up on his back. Again, here they give us a, a nub set. So they give us a, a, a tight end, single width formation. There's no wide receiver here at the bottom. Our dime linebacker's on the edge and he's coming. But again, the defensive end is dropping up top. And there we are with a four-man rush. And there is our middle linebacker and our safety stepping in. I left this one on here because I want you guys to understand that even at the professional football level, we're not perfect. So this is a zone coverage, and this is our corner right here running across the field because it's single width, and he's so he's thinking in his head that he's supposed to chase it. Well, he's not. He, he's the deep third defender right here. And so what ends up happening is the safeties are now trying to rotate to try to make up for his error. But because of the pressure that we're bringing off the edge, and then we see number 57 working away from there to the, the weak hook, we're able to still get hats right at the running back. The movement by 55 is hard for 74 to pick up inside. And we have a linebacker making a tackle for a one-yard gain on a big play. And we made an error. So I want you guys to understand that, again, this is it's, – it's all, it's all football. And, and we're all going to see it. So, hey, we see 57 showing the blitz there. Don't miss the layup. It was 53 last time. Come on. And, and Dexter uh, doesn't finish there. Again, still getting pressure on the quarterback, still an incompletion, still getting off the field, but understanding that these are the plays that you show your guys uh, the day after the game. And they, oh man, I mean, they know that that's their play to make. This is a four man rush, but we're able to get a free rusher at the quarterback. It was designed that way because we knew how they were going to slide the protection. And by going inside, we knew that the tackle had the uh, habit of clamping down on that guy. So again, got, got to finish the plays that are in front of us. Here's another one. This time it's a rush. Again, it's a four-man rush. And so up top, our right defensive end is dropping. So he's folding back like he's a linebacker because he's a dropper. So as that running back tries to cut into the B gap, and we're going to see it from the end zone, I'll let it play, is that that defensive end ends up right in the play and we're able to make a stop on a short yardage play because of that fold player. We see 42 folding around, and the offensive line doesn't pick him up. I think I've got one more here of the dime rusher up top. Again, it's a four-man rush, quarterback scrambling. It's good coverage because we've got seven in coverage. And the quarterback's got no place to go. And we're off the field on third down. So here we are again. The rush is coming from our left. One of the change-ups that we're able to, to put in is we're able to allow 96 here instead of going and becoming the right rusher and, and pushing the pocket here. Sometimes when the quarterback steps up because of this pressure, he steps up inside. And so one of our change-ups 
is that we actually execute the ability for him to come back into that honey hole and make that play right there. So you're going to see 96 coming back, and he's the one who actually is getting pressure on the quarterback at the sideline, was the left tackle who's moving to the right. Before I go on to this, now it's the same pressure. It's a five-man go, but now we're bringing the nickel. I just really quickly want to uh, take a peek at the chat. Does anybody have uh, any questions? Anything that we're seeing is, are we able to uh, to follow things along right now? I think we're good, Coach. But if anybody wants to ask a question, go ahead and take this opportunity right now, and then we can carry on. So I think we're good, Coach. Let's awesome. carry on. Perfect. We're going to hit it at the end. Excellent. No, we're good. So, hey, so now we're going to bring the nickel. So by bringing the nickel, um, you know, so you're bringing a defensive back. He's a smaller body. Um, Five-man go, keeping both linebackers in coverage. It's still <clears throat> um, a way for us to, to bring a five-man pressure. When we run a blitz with this defensive back, what we actually like to do is play cover two to it. So it's it's a uh, it's a blitz, but we're actually playing cover two. So there's your flat corner. Here is your um, your half safety. I'm going to change uh, the color of the pen because I don't think you can see it very well. So here's the the half safety. So you've got the flat corner and the half safety. Here's your, uh, you know, your hook uh, curl on the right. Here's your hook curl on the left. This is your flat defender on the left. And this corner is executing a half man technique. So he is the half defender, but with only one receiver back here, it's really a half man technique on him. And so we see that it is a four under two deep coverage. So it's a slightly different zone coverage, but it allows us to bring our fifth rusher. All right, so let's start by looking at the blitz. It's a blitz that here it is coming from the field. There's the nickel. Again, a five-man pressure. We like it against the run. And so we see this run stop. Everyone's working. We got five men in the in the pro pass rush in the run stopping there comes the nickel and because of the uh, the scheme you see that number 77 this left tackle <clears throat> he sees the blitzer 75 does not and so our defensive end is unblocked excuse me is unblocked in the backfield tackle for loss Coach Bresnahan, I know it's not your side of the ball, but uh, I do have a couple snaps of, of Vegas on here, so hopefully that doesn't get me in trouble. We have the, uh, the nickel coming here from the field. They're actually uh, taking the offensive lineman away, and 45 here, our defensive end, does a great job of chasing 77 in his hip pocket. He doesn't have to worry. 45 does not need to worry about the quarterback pull because we have a blitzing uh, nickel outside of him. So he can just let it loose and go make the TFL. Okay, so here we are. They're a condensed formation. We're bringing our defensive back here at the bottom. And there he is coming off the edge and you know, making a tackle for, for a one or two yard game. By bringing some of these defensive backs, the offensive line doesn't always account for them in their counts. And so sometimes bringing these defensive backs and blitzes, especially against the run, can really uh, benefit us because the offensive line doesn't see him, doesn't account.
This was a big one. This was week one against Vegas. We're blitzing here from the right. And so our left tackle is, is going out a gap. And he sees the screen pass. And anytime there's a big man touchdown, everyone's got to celebrate. Big time game. Uh, we had two pick sixes in that game against Vegas. And we uh, escaped there week one. It ends up at the end of the season, we wouldn't have made the playoffs if we hadn't won that game. So unbelievable uh, effort by the defense and to be able to get ourselves in the playoffs and then win the win the championship. So how does this look now? Instead of being a blitz, playing four under two deep, how can we bring that nickel except play five under two deep? So right, play cover two a full seven man rush. And so we see <clears throat> that now because we're dropping the end, we that allows us for that safety to play the half on his side. So we're getting a lot of the same rotation, but we're actually playing a cover two defense now with again, a four man go. So we're still seven in coverage. We think it's a good coverage, but we're able to only bring four. We'll see it here better on the end zone. Okay. The way we were running it this week is we were telling this end right here, his job was to become the contain on the opposite side so that we weren't asking our tackles to do it. They end up throwing a toss here to, to our defensive left. So we have an extra hat at the point of attack. We're blitzing right into it. Here's another look at it. So just like I told you, sometimes even pro players make mistakes. Well, so this call here was the same one. We're supposed to have a nickel coming off the edge here right at the bottom. So we should have a nickel rushing right there. This defensive end, 50, is going to become our contain to the top. And then our two tackles are our other two rushers. That's our four-man go. The nickel doesn't go. He makes a mistake, which is why the linebacker and the nickel are in the same place. But because of the movement of the other three defensive linemen, the quarterback steps up. Where is he going to step up? Right there. That's your sack. So, again, the next day in film review, you sit down and you talk to your nickel and you say, hey, that was your sack right there. That was you. It was your opportunity to go make a play because when this quarterback steps up right there, you should be meeting him head on. So now let's look here. Another one, a different way to get us into a uh, two coverage simulated pressure. Um, I put this one on here because earlier this week <clears throat> I saw uh, Greg Williams, his son, the defense coordinator for the DC Defenders, his son made a post about this blitz about this simulated pressure. And I said, well, heck, if I'm talking sim pressures, I, I guess I should put this one on there. So we, uh, we knew out of this formation that they had a limited offensive package. And one of the plays that they had was a uh, stick concept, pass route. So this tight end is gonna come right here and hook up on the outside. He's gonna go out. And it's going to be mirrored. It's going to be on the same on the other side. So that's their route. So how can we cover it? And what we said is, okay, let's have some fun. You know, players love that, right? They, they all want to get excited, do something different, have, have a little fun. 
was, hey, let's have a little fun. Hey, these two inside linebackers, what we're going to do is we're going to have you guys go take the outside of those pass routes. Hey, defensive ends, you're standing right in front of this tight end. You cover it. How am I going to get my fourth rushers? I'm going to do it from my two cornerbacks. I'm going to do it with my defensive backs. And so it was something that we had schemed up kind of for these guys. And the quarterback was surprised. He wasn't expecting to see two cornerbacks blitzing off the edges. He wasn't expecting to see defensive ends dropping into coverage. He can't make the throw he wants to. He steps up and ends up, you know, it's a sack for our corner. Again, give the players the opportunity to have a little fun, and you'll be amazed what they can accomplish when they're enjoying themselves. Have, you know, have, they're a part of it. They have to be a part of it. How else can we bring this nickel? Well, we can bring this nickel and we can play cover three as well. And so if we're going to do that, again, we're still getting this rotation of the safeties because the DB, the nickel is coming from the field. But now it's going to be a four under three deep coverage. So we have our corner, our safety, and our corner is our deep thirds. And then our safety, backer, end, and dime are our four under coverages so the end and the backer are our two hook defenders and the safety and the dime are the two uh, curl flats again simulated pressure four man go so here we are it's empty we saw uh, earlier in the tape we had some empties and we were bringing pressure from the two-man side hey, we can bring pressure from the three-man side as well. Again, that's always important to be able to vary the looks so that uh, the offense doesn't have a bead on where uh, the pressure is going to come from. So the nickel is pressuring here from the bottom of the screen. Our defensive end up top is going to drop. We tell him to stay on his you know, railroad tracks. He is a six foot seven, 270-pound individual. He did not get enough depth. They did a good job of running a slant behind him, and they got a completion for a first down. Every clip on here is not perfect. Every clip on here isn't a, a defensive win. Again, we still tackle him after, he, after the catch. You know, that's an important way to finish every play. But, hey, sometimes they're going to execute. You know, we... They, they were able to run that route, and our defensive end didn't get enough depth. Here we are again. Now we're in trips. There's the pressure coming from the field. This week, we brought the nickel inside rather than outside. So he's coming inside. But it's still four under three deep. And we see that our safety is right there on top of the receiver with the middle linebacker rallying over to him as well. So we saw that we're able to bring these guys across with the nickel coming outside, but we can also switch it and bring him inside. It's just a different look for this offensive line. Coaching point for these guys, uh, these interior D linemen, as they're going, if they're getting any uh, face, if, if they see the, the face mask of this offensive lineman, He's got to cross anything that touches him. He's got to go. Again, good tackle by the safety. Get us, you know, get the stop. Live to play another down. Here we are uh, back in 2020. It's the same pressure. It's coming from up top. Here comes the nickel, absolutely unabated at the quarterback. They're throwing a flat route. Our safety is coming down. He is the curl flat defender. And that's exactly how you would coach him up to make a tackle. So it's a great tackle by, by Will Hill, our safety. Get, get him off field. 
Again, here's our pressure from the bottom now from the trips. Again, there it is. Four man rush, and we got a free man going at the quarterback again. They're trying to run a screen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Trying to run a screen. And our defensive tackle is all over it. They're able to get behind him. And then both the linebacker and uh, the defensive back are able to get in, make a tackle for a, a loss on third down, get off the field. Four man rush. Free at the quarterback. They're trying to throw a screen. There's our linebacker. There's our corner. We're all over it. Okay, where's the nickel? He's going to be up top. Here's the pressure. Coming from a tight end surface, doesn't matter. Again, four-man rush. see the linebacker working that way he's the field hook i'd like him to be a little bit tighter and the defensive end here at the bottom you can see he's really getting a lot of width he's the hook defender this left end he can back straight up he doesn't need to get width because we have a guy outside of him and so as he's making that drop i'd love him to be a little bit tighter right on the letters where it says for the love 57, again, he's trying to do his show. He's got to make sure he gets to his work. And he's close enough to make that play if 13 makes the catch. And we have empty again. Showing blitz down here at the bottom, bringing the nickel from up top. It's a four-man rush. We have a defensive end. This is snapped off the 27-yard line. The defensive end is 12 yards deep. Quarterback has to try to throw it over him. Overthrows it. Safety makes a great play. It's interception coming the other direction. Our ball. So it's not just lip service. You know, we're telling our defensive ends, you know, these big, long guys, we're asking them to drop back into coverage. But, I mean, this is a perfect example where his big body affects where the quarterback has to make that throw, and we get a big play out of it. We can also trade this to the next man inside. So instead of blitzing the nickel, we can bring our Mike linebacker. It's gonna look very similar, right? So we can bring in a blitz situation here. This is gonna be three under three deep. Why would we do this? Maybe for coverage purposes, because now you've got defensive backs on the field in coverage. When you blitz a defensive back, you know, you're asking your linebackers and D linemen to be involved in the coverage. and hey, they're not as good coverage guys as your DBs are. They better not be. And so because of that, there are times that you might want to bring a linebacker from the field here, from the strength, and be able to play coverage with your defensive backs. And so here, our nickel is here at the bottom, and we're bringing the Mike linebacker from the bottom. This is a five-man go, so this is a blitz. The blitzer gets pushed just by, the quarterback steps up, the other rushers hump back and get back into the play. So this is our defensive end up the top. You can see he gets to the depth of the quarterback, and as he steps up, he comes back inside, and that's a great play by Will executing uh, and finishing the play and getting a couple push-ups to celebrate, right? So now here we are again. What We had pre uh, prepared our linebacker all week in the way that their run game was, the way Seattle's run game was. He's we told our linebacker blitzing here, hey, don't be surprised when the quarterback is standing right in front of you with the ball. 
We're bringing a five-man rush here. Blitzing the linebacker. We expected the quarterback to try to throw the RPO because of the movement. And there's our linebacker standing directly in front of the quarterback. Don't be surprised. Does a great job, even with the quarterback trying to change his arm angle at knocking the ball down, incomplete, big play. Let's let's go to the next one. Don't be surprised when you're standing right in front of it. Big time play by our middle linebacker here to get that ball down. And there's another one. Again, it's five man go. So this is three under three deep, but you see how we matched it up, right? The two and the three uh, defenders. So here the, the middle linebacker thinks that he's defending this running back, but as he goes outside of the tight end, he and the safety trade responsibilities because he has the number three player. He, this is our new number three. And so he takes that tight end across the field. Good play um, by the middle linebacker. Okay. What's going to look like if we go sim pressure? Because we can do this as well, right? I mean, this is we this is this is the pattern now. This week we ran it out of an odd front, so it's actually a true zero. But here's our middle linebacker coming off the field side, four man rush, cover three. His quarterback steps up, makes a throw late, big interception by our dime linebacker. So it's giving them the same movement, same rotation, but it's only a four man go. And that's a mistake by the offense and a big play by the defense. Here I got another snap of that same pressure. Again, it's an odd front. Our blitz is up top, there it is. They try to just throw it out there on a quick now. But hey, it's cover three. So we've got, there's our nickel leveraging. He's the curl flat player. Here's our safety coming down. He's the hook player. And here's our linebacker, the backside hook, rallying to the play. We got three at the hat, you know, three at the ball. That's a gain of two and a half. Because we're still playing coverage. We still have seven in coverage. We're only bringing four. Here's one more. Again, same same pressure. Quarterback scrambles away from the blitz. We're asking our defensive lineman to be our contain. He's a little bit too tight there. We would want him to be a little wider, number 90 here. He's our contained player. We want him to keep going. When the running back tries to chip him, he's got to keep going. Quarterback is able to get outside. Again, still an incompletion. But I wanted to finish up with a man version of a simulated pressure as well. Because it's not all going to be zone. If your team is more suited to playing man, understand that we can run the same type ideas with man as well. And so here, this first is a blitz. So we are bringing five playing cover one, man coverage, the dime or the peel at defensive end is going to tail, take the running back. And then we're manned up with our DBs on the outside. So the, here it is. There's our un, unblocked uh, up the middle. This was a check because they went empty. So we already have the five man going. And then we checked it. <clears throat> to zero against empty. So we're bringing six, knocked down by our defensive end. It's just man coverage. It's just a double A-gap blitz. And we're checking it to zero because of the, uh, the formation by the offense.
Okay. Now, what does this look like if we're getting a simulated pressure? I'm going to go back to the picture. Now, our two ends are both dropping, and one of them is going to take the running back, and the other one's going to be a whole player because we're only rushing four. So we have the ability to have the low hole player. So you see there's the defensive end. They motion the running back. So the defensive end actually takes him completely out. The other defensive end knows he's going to be the hole player now. We're blitzing the two linebackers in the middle. They try to throw a quick now screen, but it's man coverage. And there's one of our defensive tackles making a tackle outside at the hashes because he's the contained player on this side and so as he's stunting this way and the ball comes he's able to redirect and get going and finish the play again we're blitzing up the middle we're dropping the two defensive ends and we're playing man coverage Again, if you were breaking us down and you saw this clip, you might not identify it as a simulated pressure. You might not identify it as a drop because our defensive ends saw uh, run action with blocking coming at them. And so we're not going to back out and give a soft surface to the offensive line. We're going to take on our block just how we do. And now we're going to play. Again, just to understand how this is supposed to always go, we have enough uh, players to make this work, okay? So we have our two in inside A-gaps, okay? We have our two B-gaps, and so we're in great shape. But what happens right here, this tackle gets cut out, and this is the hole that the running back ends up finding. So either our tackle has to not get cut out or our dropper has to be able to fold back there. But it's a good play by them. But understand, this is a big part of how we play defense this year in simulated pressures, mostly in zone, but we did play some man as well. We are the number two defense in the league. Number three scoring defense. We were number one in turnovers forced. Uh, is an awful lot of fun, and uh, you know it. Uh, I really appreciate uh, the opportunity tonight to to share with all y'all. So I'm going to stop my share, and then I am going to pass the uh, the hosting back to to Coach Reek. Uh, but it is. I'd like to at this point, you know, open and. Um, you know, if anyone's got questions, I want to hear them and let's, let's talk a little ball. Coach, thank you for your presentation. Guys, as you raise your hands, I will go ahead and uh, call you and then please ask your questions direct. Feel free, ask any question you want. Coach is here uh, and I'm sure he'll be happy to help. Coach, while everybody's thinking about their question, I've I've got one for you. How much time did you spend uh, working on um, getting the sim the sim part of the defense? How 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 big a part of that was in your package? Yeah, it, it's a big it's a big part of the package, um, <clears throat> especially in third and long situations. It's a really uh, valuable. Uh, piece of, of what we do uh, because again you want to be able to maintain coverage um, but still give them uh, maybe not a clean look you don't want to give the offensive line and, and quarterback a nice clean look in those longer situations where they can uh, try to convert so no it's a it's a big part of, of what we do uh, our first several uh, simulated pressures were installed on maybe day six so if you think about our, you know, as far as we're installing it, um, is it's, you know, on, on the sixth day of, of putting stuff in. So it's early um, because it's really something that we, we do a lot of and that is going to be important as we go. The good part is, like I said at the beginning, 
so much of the teaching is same as that the techniques and fundamentals that we were working on day one and day two and day three, when we show up on day six and just draw it up and say, hey, guys, this is how we're going to do this one. It's not new. They've already learned how to take an inside gap, how to attack a, a blocker that's coming at them in, in, in these different execution, how to rush the passer on the edge. And so now it's just um, at that point, you get to be creative as a coach and have players have fun in executing what the scheme and what the uh, X's and O's are for that individual week or individual plan. Thank you, coach. Uh, I'm going to pass it over to Coach Paul McKillop, who's got a question for you. Yeah, uh, great presentation, Coach. Thank you. Um, when you were first showing it, I was thinking this looks like a, a third down defense where it might be vulnerable against the run. And then you showed examples of where you know the drop defender didn't drop when he when he saw a run blocking. Um, but on balance, would you still say that this is maybe less strong against the run than base defense, or do you find it not so? So it's... It is uh, primarily, yes, it is a third down and long type of scheme. That is is primary. If we were in our base defense, um, and we uh, three, four, three, four, um, if you think of Pittsburgh Steeler defense and you're thinking of, of that kind of schematic, that that fourth rusher, wherever he's coming from, whether it's the Sam linebacker, the Will linebacker, or one of the two inside linebackers, well, you're only bringing four rushers. That's a way to bring uh, four and play coverage in a more run sound schematic out of a odd front. What I showed is mostly out of our uh, nickel package, out of a four man line. And yes, so I was showing you most of that, but you can absolutely run these packages if you were to cheat the tackle over and you play it in more of a an odd, then you can absolutely that's one of the best run stopping defenses in the world is uh you know tight will me six. Um, you know, bring the will linebacker, play quarter, quarter half. Um, so you're able to have that ability to do both. Um but yeah, we do put uh you know some of the blitz version that I was showing you are going to show up more in rundowns and the simulated pressures were showing up more in third and long. Okay. Michael, thank you. Michael, how many will you carry into a game typically? Simulated pressures, probably at least two. Um, and, and, you know, again, and it's not complicated, you know, because what I showed you guys today, it's, it was, you know, linebacker up the middle, linebacker off the edge, linebacker off the other edge, DB off the edge. That's about it. So um, you might have, again, there might be different tweaks. Like I showed you that the nickel could come inside or, hey, it's a tweak. Hey, we're going to run it with a twist. But that's about where, where we are. Those are basically the four that we would carry through the year. And it's just a question of, especially empty. We saw a lot of empty on third and long. It's where do we want the pressure to come from? Where does the center slide? Do they do they protect uh, the quarterback's hand? Do they protect the field? And so then it's okay in empty. Where do we want the pressure coming from? Do we want it coming from the three man side or the two man side? If the back's in the backfield, do we want it coming to the back or away from the back? Because those are the things, the conversations that we have. Because we want to see if we can get it schemed up to get a free hit at the quarterback even if we're only taking four man rush. Gotcha. Thank you. Um, question from coach Steve McCusker. Hey coach, thanks for that. This is uh, an offensive line guy. I was uh, having heart attacks, figuring out how we're going to defend this kind of stuff. So thank you for that. Um, uh, but the thought occurred to me, you're asking Defensive ends to drop into coverage. You're asking Nichols to come off the edge. So, uh, technically, how much time? I mean, you're saying you go into a game with maybe two or, two or three of those a game, right? So, you're not going to ask these guys to do this every down. But um, how much time would you spend on teaching those skills, the drop skills to the DN, 
the rush girls to the nickels? And would you have your D end in a third and long period in seven on seven? And then vice versa, yeah, would you have your DB and uh, and uh, DBs and the the one on one pass rush stuff? We didn't do much of bringing DBs down to pass rush, and maybe we should. <clears throat> um, but we absolutely the defensive ends were at seven on seven. Um, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. because if we because uh, we also you know with any of the fire zone concepts. Now I was showing you uh, one man pressures. So it was a five-man go without a dropper to, to marry it with the simulated. But if we brought two off the edge, well, now that end has to drop even in uh, blitz coverage, right? Because you're still it's still a five-man go at that, that point. But now you're bringing two linebackers or a linebacker and a defensive back. And so that end is going to have to drop anyway. So in seven-on-seven, seven, absolutely, we he, those defensive ends are there. Um, so they're working on it every day. Uh, in individual, uh, it's something that we would work early on in training camp as part of kind of the uh, fundamentals of the position. But the most of the work that they're going to get on a weekly basis is going to be in seven on seven and team when we're actually yeah. doing it against somebody else. Um, as far as the DBs blitzing, we probably don't practice it enough. Um, and, uh, you know, again, it's something that you work on in your uh, preseason where you're going through all your tack tackling circuits. You're going through all mm -hmm. your different, um, you know, fundamentals of football that every player on the defense has to know. And so those guys do get some of that rushing. They also, in their weekly work that they do with the defensive back coaches, in addition to all of the uh, coverage and footwork things that they're doing ball drills they are hitting and tackling every single week because whether it's a blitz or whether it's the running back or whether it's a wide receiver after the catch those guys still need to be able to to execute that having them run fast shouldn't be hard the challenge is making sure they finish the play and, and get the guy on the ground yeah, no, I know certainly as an offensive line guy, if I know I'm going to be playing against you, I want I want some DBs coming off the edge with linebackers dropping and one on ones, so that I can I can I can see that in practice and coach it up before we get to any kind of um, team unit protection period where the, the, that poor tackle hasn't seen that speed coming off the edge ever, you know. Exactly. Well, and, yeah, and, and, so, and, and also yeah. frames, because we might be talking about a nickel who might be 5'8". Mm -hmm. And yeah. so, you, you know, if you've got a good-sized tackle, who's 6'4", 6'5", 6'6", 6'7", and all of a sudden he's trying to block a guy that's 5'7", and dipping, you know, it, that surface is tiny. And now if you get yeah, it could pause, stop him in one hand though. I mean, come on, it, let's it, be if serious. You, <laughs> hey, if, you get, if you get your hand on him, absolutely. Yeah, no, that's... Uh, that that's the goal. Yeah, but that, that, I mean, uh, some of this stuff, uh, I'm going to have to get on a whiteboard and figure this out because um, we don't see an awful lot of that here in Europe. And I'm guessing after tonight's conversation, we might see quite a bit more. Hopefully no one from Denmark's watching. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thank you. Uh, we've, we've got a couple of more questions, but I, what, what I want to say at this stage is that I'm going to, and I hope they don't mind, I'm going to take a, an advantage towards the end of talking to Coach Reinbold and Coach Bresnahan since they're on the call as well about a couple of other things. Uh, so please, guys, once you've done your questions, hang around because there's a couple of questions I want to ask these guys and the information we'll get certainly has helped me over the last, well, since I've known them. So I, I'd like to, them to share it with you. So Coach Connor Lynham. Uh, yeah, great. Uh, thanks for a uh, brilliant presentation, Coach. Um, I especially uh, appreciated the double cornerback blitz. I think uh, I think our guys would definitely uh, their eyes would light up if uh, they saw that one in the playbook. <laughs> that's that's fantastic stuff. Um, uh, my question, like I I was gonna ask something very similar to what Coach McCusker just asked. Um, I suppose um, just thinking about how you manage. I mean, I suppose uh, in the XFL, every, everyone's a fantastic athlete, but would, would you, 
like w- would you would you have some linemen that you would prefer to see dropping than others and, and kind of draw things up so that they're yeah. more likely to get into that situation? Absolutely, one hundred percent. You you have to design everything that you do offensively or defensively. You have to make sure that your players can do it. If your players can't do it, then it, it it's just pretty. You know, it's pretty on a piece of paper. Um, we have two outside linebackers, and one of them was more the dynamic guy, the guy that you don't mind dropping, who's played some inside linebacker. So he's a good rusher, and we like him coming off the edge but he's actually he can drop as well he's done that in his career and the other guy is a big guy a run stopper who's more likely to have moved from defensive tackle and because he was a good athlete got moved to outside to end and well of those two who do you want to drop there's it's it's not a contest and so there was a clip on there that houston uh, ran a slant, a deep slant right behind our six, seven defensive end trying to drop. Well, part of that's our fault because that six foot seven, 270 pound defensive end, that's not his best attribute is going backwards. That's not it. And so what we did as the season went on, that was week two. And so as the season went on, we would try to scheme up our packages so that the more athletic guy, the guy who's more comfortable dropping in space we tried to put it so he was always away and that was we did that based on how we called our front or if we uh would if it was a particular blitz he knew hey i have to be the away the way in and so absolutely those communications happened as coaches and those communications happened on the field with our players that's great that's fine that that makes a lot of sense thanks coach uh, Coach Simon Noonan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks, Coach. Really enjoy, enjoyed your talk. Um, my question is very similar to Coach McCaskers: Is what are you trying to instill in your ends when they're dropping? That's in regards to where they open their hips and where they get their eyes. So, de- depending on the individual, um, some of the technique is a little um, flexible. Because if a guy is a better backpedaler than he is at actually opening his hips, I'm okay with him actually backpedaling out. Um, Because it some for some guys that's going to be a faster move for him. But typically, we'll have him open his hips to his work. So if he is you know that weak hook player, he's going to open that way, and then he'll cross over run. But That backpedal, if it keeps him on the train track, so on the hashes that are actually on the field, he can back straight up on those. And and he only needs to get to about seven or eight yards depth. If that, you know, that one snap where I showed you the defensive end was at 12 and he forces a high throw and we get an interception, that's the exception. That's not what we're coaching him necessarily to do on every play. That guy was a pretty exceptional athlete. We had a package with him where he became the free safety. He started a defensive end and he played free safety. I mean, you got to, again, if you've got the guy who can do it, then, hey, you can do all sorts of fun things. But, yeah, the technically, you're not trying to get him to, uh, to become a drop linebacker. You're just trying to for him to be able to drop into his right area with good spacing so that if we're in a four under three deep coverage, he has to be able to um, he has to be able to be in that window for the quarterback. Um, you know, just to, to talk about it, just one quick second is when you see uh, four verticals out of trips. So if we have a trips formation like this. And we have four verticals and number three is coming across the field in cover three. We typically tell the weak hook player that he has to be the deep hook and he's responsible for taking that number three over. If we're in a sim pressure where that's a defensive end, we're going to tell the safety who's there outside of him. You have to do that because we're never going to ask the defensive end to take the number three vertical from the other side of the field. So, I mean, there is always a little bit of a give and take with Mm -hmm. 
what we're, what what's written on the chalkboard um, based on what the offense gives us formationally and play. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. Uh, do we have any more questions? Any interjections? Anything? Coach, I have, I have one further question for you on that. So when you were in that XFL situation, there's a very, it's a very short uh, season compared to the way the way we guys are or the N NFL or whatever. Did you adapt? Did you, is this a scheme you wanted to bring in there or did you have to adapt it for that short period of time so you knew you could get the most production out of it? Yeah, it, it's it's a base part of what we do. Um, and so, yeah, no, it wasn't something that was adapted. It was, it's definitely a, a basic part of what we do. Um, I got a question here uh, in the chat asking yeah. a, against uh, three by one uh, when I, when we had maybe a nickel blitz called, could we check it to the Mike linebacker? And the answer is absolutely. Um it depended on the week and the blitz on whether we would want to check it to that guy, to the, to the Mike linebacker to come off the edge, as opposed to the nickel. Um, it really is a different look for the offense, bringing that defensive back, but you do have to make sure that the rotation is such that you're covered down and taken care of. Cause if you're bringing the nickel and you're bringing the safety down that side, so you start to maybe get a funky look that they offensive line or quarterback can identify, Hey, there's too many people over there, you know? And so you have to be a little careful on, on the look, the pre-snap look so that they can't identify uh, where it's coming from. Uh, but uh, that's, we, we do have the ability to check it to the, uh, the Mike linebacker to try to make it a shorter path. Um, and also, again, keep the coverage guys in coverage and the blitzers in, in, in going after the running back and quarterback. 